stuff. Um, page one is just get the agenda, some of the things we hope to get through. I know we only have an hour tonight, so hoping to get through the operating and capital, have the health insurance discussion, um, the property tax rate discussion, the utility tax rate discussion, and, and the grant requests. Um, page two just gives you a list of changes from the last work session so you have an idea. Um, a lot of footnotes have been added. Jim, based on the discussion from last week. So hopefully we'll go through if you want any updates on them, I can have them for the next one. All right, so page one of the budget, um, with all the changes from last week, the general fund is in the positive 208,283. Oh, go ahead. Just looking at the changes, and I apologize that I haven't watched no, the okay. last one. You guys are thrilling, I know, and I probably should have watched it, but. Um, why was the money moved from street decorations to general fund capital? Jim had said he thought instead of it being a um, annual thing where we change it or at keep ten thousand every year, we do it for a few years as capital. Okay, makes sense. But so doesn't stay in during. Okay, cool. The old one-time expense versus recurring. Yeah, good with that. I was just curious because we had discussed that. Good question. Previously. All right, so general fund is now in the positive two hundred eight thousand two thirty-three. And page two, the enterprise fund is in the positive 29,703. So I was hoping, and um, if you guys want to change it up, let me know. We could start at A10 and just kind of see if there's any questions and see if we can get any consensus based on um, what we've talked about already. So A10 would be <coughs> on page five. <coughs> Get a couple <clears throat> footnotes added that changed that color to blue to try to make it easier as you're going through to see what they are. Again, the overall change in this budget is just due to ML, MML increased dues for the upcoming fiscal year. So, any questions or consensus on A10 being okay? Okay. Okay. It's okay. fine. All right. H6A70 planning and zoning. Um, the only change here, which we've um, discussed, is the increase in fees from MDIA. So, any questions or consensus on the budget? I'm fine. Yeah, that's good. Page 7, A81, municipal buildings. The only change a year over year was projected infrastructure repair costs and an increase in valuation for property taxes, um, 6500 over year over year. Um, any questions on A81 or consensus? And just as a reminder, the um, the repairs and maintenance is supported by some capital expenditures for the same thing. So, yes, yep. <coughs> yes, absolutely. And we've netted on that building for the that we it, so we were in the positive about six hundred thousand. I think all of us are a big fan of keeping up what we got. So, yeah. thank you for that. All right, page eight and nine would be a ninety-two. You'll see the, the footnotes, um, Jim, or Councilmember Beecham, and Blue, I'm sorry. Um, just give you the idea of the year-over-year -year changes um, based on our discussion from last week. Uh, the overall budget increased 168000 These were based on addition of just the administrative assistant. We moved the um, public information on the <coughs> salary to contract services to look at hiring a firm. It says the YMCA costs. That has the software cost um, increase in the support hours and then new equipment for positions. So, any questions on A92? Do you have a sense of how many employees would take advantage of the Y? Like, I, that was something we had talked to Crystal about previously, trying to figure out what she did a survey. Would be. <clears throat> she did do a survey, and I apologize, she's um, is away. I, if she did a survey and she included she did, it, I assume it was. She did a survey, I don't know if it's in here because I know that I. Took the survey Me too. probably after she left on vacation. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> I don't think Got I it. took it when I was supposed to take it. We so. did have some discussion with like, um, like I've had some discussion outside with like Public Works. Um, I talked yeah. with the chief about it, about the police department a little bit to get the interest. And surprisingly, I was just talking to Public Works today, and the guys were like, "That would be awesome to go to the gym, you know, yeah. half an hour during the day, can, to kind of blow off some steam." Can we take a moment, like, with the departments that are represented, just to briefly? 
talk about what you're hearing and what your impression would be the benefit is I know for my office and there's six of us in there and that includes public words admin so I don't want to speak for you guys but I mean we've all had those days where you just want to blow off some steam and we've talked about you know just to go to the Y and walk around the track a couple days a week um, take a like an extra half an hour in the day off some scene, those kind of things. Everybody in my department seemed very interested in it. Um, and there's six of us if you include the public works admin. Uh, yeah, exactly the same. We have 13 sworn officers, and the conversation has obviously circulated throughout my agency, and everybody is on board 100%. They're excited about it, actually. This was for their families, too, right? Yeah, the cost that's in the budget is inclusive of uh, family membership. The only thing that's not included is there's a little bit more of a discount for the police department. And it's like 15 percent. Right, so it actually goes down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. the other thing we look at is, you know, Maryland also has mandated us to have a physical fitness standard now. So every year we have to submit to the to the state that we have completed yeah. certain standards. So this would help them meet that. Okay. Cool. I like it. And how much of that increase is what we're talking about? Twelve nine thirty six, and that was inclusive if every employee joined with their family. And that's our maximum us, exposure would be yeah. just under we thirteen. We certainly could um, pull reports from the Y to see, you know, are people using it three days? You know, we could have some sort of, you know, you got to use it three days a week to, you know, if the town's going to pay for the benefit. Here are some of the stipulations that go along with it. And, and I had talked a little bit about that last time. <laughs> Not in time for this budget uh, completion, but um, you know, over the next couple months, I love the idea of getting, as I suggested last time, with Beverly Churchill uh, from the county to just look at what they do for their bingo, the wellness bingo card, and I, I think there's some things that we could borrow, some best practices there that would just help instigate folks. And our insurer would probably offer prizes and stuff for that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I know there's some wellness stuff. You know, Crystal was going to dig into a little bit more as well, you know, could, could it help on insurance plans or anything like that? I'm sure. so I, know she's that. Well, I think that was one of the outstanding items on here. Do we have, do people still have challenges there or do we have consensus on including that or? I'm all for it. I am too. I'm good. Sure. Why not? I'm not. Do you have any lingering? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> okay. Is there any levels of enthusiasm? <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> uh, All right. Was there any other questions in A92? Again, the um, PIO was moved to contract services and the administrative assistant. The HR assistant was moved. I like it. Yeah, so we're going to work on doing that in-house and see how that works out with the new streamlined system. So... Weren't we going to have some discussion about the health insurance increase? There is a discussion. Oh, there is a discussion further after the budget. Um, Carolyn has a memo that she's okay. going to go. If that's all right. Oh no, the button's there. So we can do consensus on everything except that until we get to that point, and then when she has that discussion, if we need okay. to adjust, okay. we can. If that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it's totally up to you guys. There is a memo in the packet. Let me hunt it down and I'll tell you where it's at. It's towards the back. The big packet. <laughs> it's near, <laughs> it's after the fund balance and ARPA update, if that helps you as you're going through it. Past the capital, then you'll have an ARPA update, then a fund balance, and then you'll see the memo for the health benefit structure. If you need it, I can. Okay. It's your well, if anyone thought that this memo was going to make me less angry than I was, I find it incredibly inappropriate, this Kevin Karpinski's comment about what someone's spouse might make, because uh, that's none of our business. So I, I just remain, a, or I remain really angry. I remain really, really angry about this. From my understanding, and I think this is from the conversation with Kevin Karpinski, is a lot with the um, salary based and the reason that it is looking at the salary based is we don't know and-, and Carolyn, your mic's muted. I don't want to hit buttons like I did the last time. <laughs> 
Oh, you muted it again. You were on. We're all nervous My, when you touch that microphone. There we go. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, because the, this is my understanding, because the town offers the same benefits to everyone, that is why the, the, um, the deductibles, or the, not the deductibles, I'm sorry, the co-insurance payments are the same for everyone. My understanding is when you, when benefits are different amongst employees, so maybe the CEO may get MRIs and someone else may not, then that's where they look at the difference between those two. That's not my experience in the real world, in the non-government world. So I'll say that. I, man, I just find this so gross, this email from Kevin Karpinski. I find it. We know nothing about an employee's personal financial situation, what their spouse makes. We don't know if they go home and have to turn their whole salary over to their spouse and are in a horrible situation. I mean, we know nothing. And for us to make a decision about benefits and have any part of that consideration be because they might have a wealthy spouse is disgusting. I mean, it's frankly disgusting. So I remain with a desire to not have somebody that we're barely paying a living, living wage pay the same amount for insurance as somebody that we're paying a six-figure salary. I think that's wrong. I just, I think it's wrong. I, I guess nothing's going to convince me that it's not wrong. But... If our HR person thinks that that's just too difficult for her to manage, then good to know. So I, I'll just add, is my mm -hmm. mic working? <laughs> Double checking. Okay. Folks at home really want to hear from me. Um, I digress. I would absolutely agree. It's not what I'm used to seeing in like the healthcare sector. Um, so I too share the discomfort with what's being asserted in his communication. Um, I'm not sure how it's resolved this budget cycle, um, but but just for the record, I I, I share the concern. I, I would like to see equity in this. And I'm I'm willing to let it go in the inter this year in the interest of doing something differently. But last year I said, let's discuss this mid year. Let's not discuss this again at budget time when we're under the gun. And yet, we got some nonsense memo at the start of budget season, and now we just get a frankly an offensive nonsense addition to the memo and I, I certainly hope the people that we pay crap wages have a wealthy spouse I hope Kevin Karpinski's right I guess does the specific <clears throat> health insurance as is is, it, is she still recommending the 8515 or is there a <clears throat> the recommendation is to keep it as is or there are other there were there's two other options to look at um, reducing um, increasing the town's um, contribution back to 90 percent um, why well, say back it was a, it's been a while since we didn't we've done that um, and also um, opt-out payments if you don't get the town's insurance there's a there's an opt-out payment I know the the county does that as well or they used to uh, adjusting oh sorry go ahead. No, go ahead um I was think so adjusting to instead of 85 15 90 10 would increase the budget for by 38 9 20 and then if we did the opt-out option for those that don't pay that that would increase the budget 4800 okay I think 85 15 is really generous unless you are on the lower end of our pay scale. <laughs> you don't solve what I'm looking for by paying for more of the insurance for hirers, that's for sure. And I don't necessarily believe in the paying people not to take the insurance. So we can't adjust the share based on salary, apparently. It has to be the apparently same for everyone, hard. right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I don't think it's too hard. I just think the people that we have contacted are indicating that it can be considered discriminatory because everyone receives the same level of coverage. Right. And so I think it's discriminatory that for some people it's 2% of their salary and for some people it's 10. But... 
And we can we have the chart where we've done a percentage of the salary and <clears throat> so if we stratify our pay scales into say three layers, just three layers, and came up with a number and then wait and see if somebody sues us if it's discriminatory. <laughs> That's we'll all that is always an option. Then we'll revert back. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. who's, who's gonna sue us? Those at the high end of the pay scale? Because they're not they have to pay more than somebody at the bottom end? Is that <laughs> right. right. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Let them. And then we'll talk about it. But why don't we just cut so, some, why don't we put all the yeah. grades into two or three different layers? I think we need more time, which is why I hate doing this during budget season, right? It's like this is a crazy time to be doing it. All right. And we should be talking about this in December so that come budget season we have a plan, which is what we asked for last year and then we just had some bigger fish to fry. I'll work with you for a mid-year budget adjustment on that then. And the problem is we get into our insurance plan when we get into our insurance plan. So if we just... We're not changing the insurance coverage. Yeah, we're not. We could just start discussing it. Right, we're changing it. what we're paying. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. We could start discussing it when I give the mid-year update yeah. as opposed to... No, we're going to gonna resolve it by then. Yeah. So in yeah. December, you know... Okay, can, let's do that. Let's put good. it on the calendar. And let's maybe cast a wider net from where we get our information than... Karpinski. Karpinski. <laughs> I mean, I can do the research yeah. myself. And too. we we talk to our benefits people too. They've had the same suggestion, so um, it wasn't yeah. just Kevin. But and it's it's um, a it is harder to manage, right? It's more to manage. I, computer keystrokes, I would bet. I, most private companies that have you have a company that has warehouse workers and ten lawyers. Those people don't pay the same thing for insurance, and they shouldn't. And I just, I just feel like the job spread in town for such a small staff, the, the salary spread is so bizarrely huge for the size of the staff. All right, we'll do it mid-year. I'll make a note, um, Carolyn, you right. and I could maybe start in October, November. Okay. All right, so. Notwithstanding that, set that aside then, uh, looking at 7130, A92, 7130, health insurance is up. A hair over 10%. Yeah. Is that about right? Yep. And that has no new employees in it? One. That Admin one assistant. Okay. Yep. So if we're looking apples to apples, the same people that were in last year's budget, this year's budget, it'd be about flat? Okay. Gray 92, yep. So not my notes don't come from the latest version, but for police, it was down 30,000 mm -hmm. in an earlier version. A, any change in... Staffer, I mean, I know you've had some turnover, and as in last year, in the within the last fit, because my assumption would be a change in staff in this type of plan that they have a pam, family as opposed. Okay. I'd have to double check with Crystal. To, I don't know. This seemed like <clears throat> um, <clears throat> conflicting swing, yeah. where admin went up and police went down by such a dramatic amount, yeah. and that may have been reconciled in here, and I haven't seen it. I'm looking from the, my notes are from the original version. That's why I was trying to look at the footnotes, yeah, because it went down. My, let's see. No, I don't have a footnote, so I, I you know, I don't want to make assumptions. Right. I'll look you, into in the it. The latest version. Do you still see the police? Yes. Going down. Yep. I mean, Thirty thousand. Thirty yeah. grand is a big number to be yeah. going down. For, on and like, I want to say that. Down is that? I'm not looking at the numbers. No, Fifteen. Could that, could that be contributing to the? Per personnel as far as staff. Yeah, and so that's my thought. If you had somebody, two people, so that's two. And then having a, um, right. if there was a possible family plan, and now somebody's right. single, you know, those sorts of things. But I can, I don't want to assume I will <laughs> yeah, yeah. get you a actual. Answer. Wild swings up and down, yeah. and especially when they contradict each other between departments. This if it's is right. It's right. I just want to know yeah. why. To me, it's such a hard thing because on one hand, I feel like we should budget for everybody taking the full benefit, and we. For yeah. new employees, they do. Because yeah. yeah, I just, For I just existing hate, employees, they stay. Right, but if someone have, right? leaves, I just hate the idea of it feeling like the only way to stay on budget is to hire someone who doesn't need benefits. If someone leaves and we have to hire their position, yeah, because the only Never time we adjust is call. the only adjustment is made during budget. If we have a vacant position, we then go full in okay. at yeah. the highest. That would be discriminatory. Right, yeah. it would be, but yeah. I, it happens. Just to be covered, we don't want to have to come back for an amendment for, you know, yeah. those yeah. kind of things. At least a, a going over the budget. Which is why paying people who opt out can help get rid of that. 
there's no incentive for the employer to hire someone who doesn't need insurance if you got to pay them either way. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. All right. Any other A92 questions? Okay, I will make a note. Um, Carolyn and I will start working on health insurance in October, November to go over with you guys in December. Jim, I'll get you a difference in the B10 just to see what that is. Um, consensus on A92 after those discussions. I'm good. All right. B10, police department, starts on page 10. One more question. I'm sorry to back yeah. up. Yeah. So the cost transfer is at 5%? 5%. So um, we're transferring $74,000. Is that right? Yep. $74,000 is 5%. So based on our surplus, no. It couldn't because the enterprises couldn't Everyone. handle it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's about sixty thousand every percent. So, yeah. All right, page ten, police department, an overall decrease of fifty-seven thousand. Um, these were just based on personnel changes, the pension um, calculation. Uh, we got more down pat this year than the year before we were using the calendar or the fiscal as opposed to the calendar from the state um, we added the canine line for the dog the IAPO and Lexapol software to the contract services line so any questions on B10 or consensus Good. okay uh, C11 oh, B22 Consensus on staying at 75,000 from last year? I'm good. Okay, by me. Yeah. All right, page 13, Streets Department. <clears throat> An overall change of 78,000. Um, these changes are because we moved safety, education, training, uniform, clothing, employee expense, conventions, meeting, lodging, food, and travel, all from C2124. So those budgets went down to move the budget lines here where all the employees are paid out of and the cost of supplies increased. <coughs> Footnotes were added based on conversations from the last one. Are there any questions for the streets department or consensus? Other than those <coughs> transfers between departments, what, what, how would you characterize the other changes as material or not material? Not material, yeah. Out of thank you. Yeah. All right. Page 15, C22, the increase here just based on the new contract cost for the upcoming year. Any questions or consensus? I'm good. Um, D10, Parks Department, <clears throat> the only change is the increase in the contract cost. This is where we moved the streets decoration to the capital line and took it out of the operating. Um, any questions or consensus? The increase out. But yes. The baseline is still there for Correct. Yep. So, yeah, I have a request for here. Um, sort of here, sort of Main Street. You can split it or whatever. The Parks Board is interested. Apparently, the Maryland Heritage Trail map has errors on it. It does not accurately reflect our trail. And so they are interested in new marketing materials for the trail. I talked to Carol about it. She thinks the design of new paper marketing materials would be like 700 bucks. And then printing. Our trail hosted the Caroline County Bird watching something I think today it was either today or tomorrow this morning and looking to attract more groups like that who might come and do walks on our trail and then you know go to lunch in town or whatever they might do so they just want more brochures that we can put out at other places at Seabeck at Tuckahoe at other places that people who might enjoy our trail are so I would like us to put like it's not a lot two or three thousand dollars in the budget for the purposes of trail marketing um, like a dotted line between Carroll in terms of it being like a little tourism Main Streety and the Parks Board because the trail is their thing. And those are kind of one-time charges. So one in the cap capital budget, sort of the operating. But, but yeah, understand. just yeah, just so we can update what we've got. All right, um, so we can call it brochure updating. I can't yeah. imagine a scenario where we wouldn't do that, especially because we're investing in the trail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we have this great and there trail. There may be another revision once we get a general plan on the track we're buying with program open space money. So right. We'll do that again at some point. Again. Yeah, and, and they're it's worth keeping on current. Yeah. They're working on a parks master plan, hopefully, and I, I just don't know that people realize how great our parks or our trail are, and we could do a better job with that. You think two thousand, or would you rather see three thousand? The general fund is in a good position, could handle either or. I 
don't have a good sense of what printing a brochure costs. I'd rather come in under than be like, oops. Oh, having, <laughs> having, just, had some, having, yeah, having just had something printed that I literally almost has to be glossy. grew up yeah. that it was so expensive, I'm, expensive. I would recommend yeah. going with the 3K. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. On the capital budget. On the capital it's, budget, it's like Jim yep. suggested. I'll adjust that um, for the last budget meeting next, or two weeks from now. Unless anyone hates trails and wants to oh, say no to that. Good thing to bring tours. This, yeah. this is your night to really hate on trails if you do. <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> All right, so I've added the 3000 to capital. Anything in operating or consensus? Good. Okay. H40 Main Street, the budget stayed exactly the same. <clears throat> Any questions or consensus? I'm good. No. H60, page 18, this is the cemetery. Um, the increase of seven grand is landscaping <laughs> costs and Chesapeake burial. Um, any questions or consensus? I love the cemetery <laughs> as much as I love health insurance. <laughs> All right, I'm, good. Good. I'm as good as I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we look at the year over year cemetery as opposed compared to the Liberty, we definitely there's more of a loss. Um, there hasn't been a year where we, not that we should be making money, but we should break even and we don't. So did we, how did we, there's no way we, act, I do have a question actually. There's no way we had no legal fees related to the cemetery last year. Or we just don't break it down that way. I don't think it, I think Carolyn I want to say because there isn't a budget in there, I think I just take it out of the 892. I think so too. Yeah. I'd be curious to know. Kind of oh, I would just be curious to know how much of her time we're spending on cemetery issues. Just this last yeah. one that we've been i can calculate it for you yeah, I just, yeah i'd like that too yep just you know if you whiz cool if you need me to pull anything carolyn let me know but fine either way that's just a, curi a curiosity yeah. absolutely all right h90 page 19 watershed increase of four thousand and this is just where the street sweeper goes so Great. getting new brushes sweeper brushes for the equipment so, uh, any questions or consensus? That should be an annual charge back to this one time sort of stuff. It should be a one time. We normally buy about um, four or five different sets. They're fairly cheap just to have them on. Um, normally, with our new hires, they tear them up a little bit faster. We're kind of getting a little low, but I've got a guy in there now that's doing great. We just need new brushes. And that is a one time instead of a recurring. Yeah. Well, what I mean, it, is it, uh, there, I'm sure there's some amount that's recurring just to keep the equipment current. And that's what I was wondering if some of this would be more inclusive of th overall so, throughout the years. Like each year there's something I'm different. I'm not debating the dollars at all. It's just a matter of how we characterize it. I guess for me, I, I a little bit feel like some of this level of specificity, wow. You know, like, what do I do for a living, sorry. is it, no, 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 not you. I mean, the budget, <laughs> not you, Jim. I appreciate you. I mean, the budget, could it be 4,000, whatever for maintenance? And this year it's brushes and next year it's something else. I like, I a little bit feel like yeah. All right. maybe we don't need to be so granular hmm. down to the street sweeper brush in okay. the, in the budget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, we can talk about every single thing they're going to no, buy. No. How many paper no. clips are you getting this year? We I'm can do it. it. <laughs> But I just we tried to go. I mean, we, we, we just wanted you guys to not have. Yeah, yeah. A time, we wanted you to see everything in black and white. And no, I appreciate that. I just for me, I'm okay with it being an operating because maybe this year it's sweet, street sweeper brushes, and next year it's something else. Right. Yeah. And so I the think that was the, sweeper, yeah. the discussion as we went through the budget okay. was yeah. All right. Consensus. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. We'll go to page twenty-two. Sewer department expense. Um, the increase was sixty-four thousand for the fiscal year. Again, you'll see the decrease in some of these lines as we move them to the streets department. The added footnotes, um, but the increase this year was for year two of the contract services for the plan operations and the increase in the cost of chemicals. Um, so, does anyone have any questions or consensus for sewer? I'm okay with what's here. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. okay. Page 25 is the water department. Uh, the total increase year over year is 2100. Again, you'll see a bunch of decreases because we move much of it to the streets department as well as 
the um, ARPA funded project manager position and the increase in year two of the wastewater treatment plant operations. Any questions on water or consensus? Good. 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 All right, the final page of the operating budget, um, the farm, and again, the increase here is 24,998. We tried to go based on trend. We've had to do a budget amendment to this line every year since I've been here. Um, so between that and trying to catch up on some equipment repairs, we try to go more in line with what we've spent so that we're not asking for a, an amendment next year. So if there's any questions or consensus on the farm. Good. I'm good with it. Um, the next page just gives you the notes on how the breakdown of percentages is for pension, Social Security, and all those uh, workers' comp. Page 29 is the breakdown of our debt schedule, which we went over at the first or second meeting. We are down, as of 6.30 this year, we will be down to 10,531,000 um, with the payoff of two bonds this fiscal year that we're currently in. And just so you know, of that, 27% is general fund debt, 73% is enterprise. All right, so the next two pages is the capital budget. I was just Again, if we can go down and get consensus or answer any questions by department, um, unless you guys want to do it a different way. All right, A81 municipal building, 100,000. This was for the fashion roof repair and some other maintenance um, of the building that we haven't done um, any in quite a few years. Questions for consensus? A92 has the class and comp study, the GIS system cost that's split between departments and the asset management software split between departments. Any questions or consensus? Good. Okay. We'll go with the whole capital budget. <laughs> and I would, you know, we'll of this, yeah. you know, and we did go over it twice because you guys weren't here the first time and you weren't, yeah, so we did thoroughly go over it. I don't have any major questions unless you guys did. Um, for next week's final approval, I will add in the 3000 under D10 for the brochure updating. Was there any other updates to the capital that anybody had? Last time I growled about the comp study, but it's all right. Yeah. I don't love it either, but. If you took the $25,000 and just fixed the salaries that you're worried about. Yeah, it also just doesn't feel that long ago. I mean, I. I know the last one was done about three years ago, but it was done in-house, so I don't know how, you know, if an independent, I, I just, I'm gonna be honest, the requests from HR feel outsized to the size of staff that we have. We could certainly go back and look at some of the public works department employees and see if we could do something different. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Want for the next um, are we worried about certain ones or are we just trying to set the bar just I mean it, I think there's certain like you know the again like you said with the equity there is a big difference in high and low end and you know the turnover has been really good lately and in order for him to keep what he currently has I think some discussions on that would definitely be I definitely like the idea, idea of having it be done externally as opposed to the last one in-house. And that absolutely no could attack help. attack on the in-house, but I, I, I do question the magnitude there. I know, it's just it's something that I would have no clue, right? Is 20, does $25,000 make sense? I have no idea. I will tell you, she got a couple and twenty-five was really good because I think one of them was like 70000 Okay. I was surprised. You just give everyone a raise and say it's 70 grand. Yeah. I mean, I know she I'm did. I'm wrong business, y'all. I could Google salaries all day, too. <laughs> 70 grand. Okay. I'm in. I'm in with you. Yeah. I went through our staff roster, and we are currently, we have 18 classifications occupied. So this is spending about 1400 bucks per classification that's occupied okay. to study it. Seems high to me. All right, it's not a hill I'm gonna die on though, so. All right, um, police department, you get nothing. Vehicle, oh yeah, y'all said we were good, I'm sorry. <laughs> so everybody, we can, is we a, can you keep know, doing it. I really wanna talk about mowers. <laughs> <laughs> I did <laughs> 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 
yeah. just just real quick before we move on because we we spent some time on this last time so i know we agreed to keep the 2k in for the axon cameras so Correct. that we could always have spares but we also said let's go ahead and spend the money to get this year yeah uh, yes so i just wanted to make sure that we were executing and I, on that. yeah we had him and i did talk about it a little bit um within the, his current budget yeah we can absolutely okay. do that good Thank you. So as I don't think they're going to sleep on saying we, they can buy the things that they need. <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah, his budget's in a good place. So I absolutely think he'll still be within budget at the end of the year, even if he buys a few now. So, all right. So overall, the general fund capital is 369, 647. It is inclusive of the general fund summary page at the beginning. So the 200,000 remaining is already inclusive of all the capital listed. Same with the enterprise, 218700 for the capital. It's inclusive of the 29000 in the positive. Um, did you want any before next work session to look at any salaries and anything specific before to bring back to you for the final work session? <clears throat> what do we have to do to make today the final work session? Yeah, this feels like we're... We've <laughs> There's not a lot hanging out there. Right. We need to make a decision on. Well, we decided to leave insurance alone, right? For now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a year we'll go. We'll dive in. So we'll what's in there now? At some point. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could do discuss that, add that on as a after the comp study comes. We could talk mid year about that as well if that works. Yeah, fully about personnel cost all all together. Okay. Yeah. Is, is there stuff still out there? I don't understand this. On the very last page. Oh, you're on the fun balance. You skipped the ARPA one. I read it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just missing. laughs> All right. So, kind of, what I did is I look at um, estimated. So, this is the fund balance sheet I prepared the last two years. I think we've looked at it to kind of give you an idea where we are fund balance wise with estimated re estimated revenues and expenses for a six month period based on that same time last year. So no revenues. Or with revenues? Yes, with revenues. Okay. So I estimated revenues and then expenses, encumbrances that we still have open, and where I see our ending balances are uh, about $4 million over, um, which would be our fund balance. Then in the, oh, go ahead. So the 639000 that's remaining fund balance? Yes. In the general fund, based on debt payments. Because in the second half of the year, that's where our big debt comes from. Beginning balance of 2.7. And so that's why I put the chart below that shows you the bank account balances. So we do the, <clears throat> it was recommended from ARPA that we leave the funds in the ARPA account and reimburse the general fund and enterprise fund at the end of our expenditures. So. That five million in the, in the <coughs> ARPA checking, four point eight million of that was the distribution. We've earned over three hundred thousand in interest, so we have five two sitting in the ARPA checking, um, and we've spent two million, a little over two million of that that needs to reimburse the general fund and enterprise fund at the end of. So again, that would be a cl inclusive of the fund balance as well. So that's why I try to put the ARPA balance down there, as they've advised to not transfer a bunch of times. Um, to make the single audit easier, should we spend more than seven hundred fifty thousand each year? Understanding where two point, you know, two million dollars of general fund goes away. Well, I can, balance. and I think it's based on. I think it's based on the expenditures, and so I kind of quick through these together. To, a positive fund balance contribution in this year's budget. Yeah. And we're way ahead on the year we're in right now. Yeah. So again, I, I'm just misreading this. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and it may be the way I laid it out, so it might be a, if I, I can go back to the table and try to lay it out okay. different. This was... Those wild swings that get you. Yeah. Yeah, because at one point it was six million between the two, but we did have some big purchases like the Vactron, half a million that came out of general fund balance, again, because it's ARPA, but it hasn't been reimbursed from the ARPA account. So... The 700000 we've spent in the last year on the capital stuff, the Vactron and those, the Gator, those purchases came out of the enterprise fund and the general fund directed, but the money in ARPA hasn't reimbursed it yet. So, so know, is that the 1.499 ARPA spent to date? Is that what will be if yeah. you were to reimburse today? Yeah, 
that would that be 1.499 would go back that would into, add the, into the fund balance. The fund balance. That, and so as I said, maybe I didn't lay it out as desirable. Okay. I'll go with it. And because I lingered on this last time, can you just spend like 30 seconds reminding everybody that if we wanted to spend yeah. any portion of ARPA on where we want to move with executing wastewater treatment facility replacement expansion. Yeah. That it so if you go back a page, um, just gives you kind of the ARPA update. So the top um, shows you what we have encumbered. These are the things that are still being worked on, but we have said we're going to use the funds for these. Um, there's two capital items left that Gary's working on for this fiscal year that were approved with ARPA funding. So in total, we received four million eight hundred seventy-two thousand nine twenty. In twenty-two, we spent six eighteen one ninety-four seventy-eight, and the details to the right tell you what those were spent on. In twenty-three, we spent seven hundred forty-five oh sixty-five forty-six, and in F in twenty-four, we spent one hundred thirty-six oh ninety-six fifty-nine. So when you subtract all those things, inclusive of the seven hundred forty-eight encumbrance and the ARPA capital from above, our total remaining um, balance in ARPA funds is 2,559,854. Now we just um, got word down from ARPA that they changed the term obligation to say by December 31st of 2024, money has to be obligated. By obligated, they mean within a contract. So we can't just say we're encumbering it, we actually have to obligate those funds. If we obligate those funds, it still has to be spent by December 31st of 2026. So the money must be gone. If it's not obligated by this year, we have to return funds. If it's not spent by 2026, we have to return remaining. And so, so Carolyn- the contract by this December and then two years to spend it. Yes. Contract needs to have- Needs to fall within that period and all the money must be spent by that December of 26. So I know um, Carolyn and I and Janiel are going to have a meeting in the next week or so to try to give you guys some ideas of things that we think um, we could spend that money on. But I wanted to at least you guys to see the numbers. Thank you. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. I just got my letter. So hopefully, um, if we have time at the next budget meeting, is there a council meeting at the next? Do we have a budget meeting and then a council? I think so. In two weeks, okay. So we'll yes. have an hour and a half. At, we'll be at the Vincent building next time, so hopefully we'll have it there and we can discuss a few things then. Yes, budget work session and then council <clears throat> meeting. Okay, right. right. Or it could be a regular You have just a work session on the 11th, it says, right? We don't need another yeah. workshop. There's no council meeting. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. the 11th. Is it? The 11th. Well, next week, no council. But do we need it? I guess it's the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have the. Um, it's on this time. Vincent. Vincent, it's yeah, it's at the Vincent if we do it in two weeks. I have the 18th. No, next week. Oh, is it next week? Yes. But I, I don't think we need it. Oh, dang, it's the fourth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah totally it. up to you. I mean, as of now, there's no changes except adding the 3,000 to capital, which I can ensure is emailed between now and then so that when we do start doing the hearings and such, unless we make any other changes before we leave tonight. But yeah, sure. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What else is still out there? Just one thing I wanted to mention, um, and I'm not sure how this all works within the budget, but we did get an email yesterday um, late morning that we were awarded the $2 million federal earmark for infrastructure, which was for roads. Um, I don't know what the match is for those. If there is, a, I think there is a match. What account is it? For roads? <clears throat> There's a match. Um, it varies by account. Yeah. I think I can look it up between. Tell I think it did it. say it on there. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. E EPA. Yeah. Yes, it's EPA. Okay. Okay. I'll look and see what the match is for EPA. Um, so that's the. So none of that was included in any with because we didn't know. You know, we had. Well, and also. Yet. Who knows when EPA is going to get to you on their long, long list? Um, well, it, and then it did say eight to twelve weeks before they contact us. Oh, that's to a lot shorter than some account. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, when we, I wanted, I told Karen over the next um, week, I just wanted to talk to her about looking okay. at that, and then when we talk about ARPA, ARPA funds and how all of that can kind of come into play for those yeah. things. Yeah. So. 
All right, so the final couple pages in your packet is the grant request. Um, these are the ones we discussed the last couple weeks. We just wanted to see if we could get a mass approval for these ones that are specific. And I already did that, so yeah, I'm okay. I, now that we're all, <clears throat> yeah. 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 I, I got him different times, so I just want to make sure everybody was still okay with I'm that. Good. All right, so at the very front of your <clears throat> packet, we discussed the operating capital, we discussed the health insurance. Um, I need to two more things. Are we okay with the current public utility tax rate of thirteen dollars per hundred of assessed value? Really, thirteen dollars. We seem to be getting away for, with it, so why not? We have at this point, we <laughs> haven't had any pushback. The, the, the four comp people have paid their. Yeah, we have not had any pushback. So if you want to go for it another year and see, yeah, you know, why not? Okay. And then the final discussion is property tax rate currently at fifty-three and a half cents. The constant yield is 0.5179. The difference between the two is about 105,000. Um, do we want to continue to keep the current rate, or did you want to have discussion? I'm begging you to drop the rate by a penny. What does that mean? $100,000. And we're how far positive? 100,000. After the 3,000. I would support that. I will say if you drop it, just think next year if we want to, the debt unlocks. So you may want to look at. I know. Then that's my challenge is that we have so yeah. much debt to drop it. Yeah. And yeah, I just don't know that we're in a position to lower taxes while we continue to carry the debt load that we have. Yeah. As much as I would personally love a lower Rose. tax bill. <laughs> and what, yeah, that uh, one penny out of the 57, what is our, what, 53 and a half. I mean, that's like a small percentage, really. And inflation has been greater than that. I guess that's kind of the way I look at it is, you know, we need to pay the budget. The budget's going to grow because of inflation and, uh, and other factors. And but this budget yeah. is fine. It's fine, yeah, but. And constant yield next year may be different, but we've been operating above constant yield for years now. And I understand yeah. there's inflation involved that constant yield doesn't understand. Yeah. But, but I also remember that three or four years ago when I was on council, it was 41 cents or 40.5 cents. So. It went we up twenty five percent. We were way under. Well, there was a big jump well in there somewhere. Right. Ten years straight. Like the town's operating well now. Not that it wasn't before, but it's operating well now. So I'm not. I'm not saying that was un, unnecessary, but. Sure. I like the idea of reducing debt. You know, accumulating the funds so we can pay off some bonds. I think for the. What will a hundred thousand dollars do for reducing debt? For me, if. It's going to go in the fund balance so that when it unlocks next year, it'd be a hundred thousand more we could pay on debt. I understand, you know, as a finance person, I under totally I pay property taxes where I live and it sucks. <laughs> but I know the yield that you lose as a finance person as well. And so all the years that we were at thirty eight cents, forty one cents, and way under the constant yeah. yield for so, you know what I mean? I just criminal. I, and I'm not, you know, everybody hates paying property taxes. Trust me, I, I get it. I just think if we what if we need it back next year so we yank it down? Yes, to, yeah, you know, that's my challenge. I've only been up here three years, right? But it has felt the entire time as we budget, like we are paying the price for things that were delayed for a long, long time. And I, you'd rather see incremental tax increase than the hit to get to where we are now. And like, so we reduce it a penny, which would be, I mean, I would I'd certainly love to pay less, but we reduce it a penny, and the next year we have to raise it two pennies because we don't know. I just feel, I feel like we're just not in a position financially as a town. I mean, what's when I current, got on the council, what's the current debt? debt load, what's our current debt? Ten, ten, ten million. million. Just and the saying. possibility to look at new debt for the plant, depending on how things roll out. Yeah, I mean. So, when is the constant yield here, and that's? Huh. It's when is? Point five one nine seven. So when is the hearing? Oh, there will be a hearing, right? Let me look yeah, on that. Yeah, we'll have a hearing. Um, it's on the. I'm looking on the thing. It's the April twenty sixth. The budget hearing and the constant yield hearing would be then. Okay. So I know we talked about this last time. Um, just when we think long term, that that conversation about the debt becomes even more important, and that's the idea that the second this plant that we're looking at gets built. It's going to have a 20 year shelf life. So we need to start thinking now about what does that next 20 years look like? So, yeah, I don't want to counsel 20 years from now you, being like I'll back in 2025. They <clears throat> yeah. That's how I feel about <laughs> you guys did make the decision to create that allocations bank account, um, yeah. which right now is, isn't helping tremendously because we don't have a ton of allocations. But, you know, once the plant's built and there is more, 
yeah. that account can thrive and hopefully fund the next plan. And any of that debt will be enterprise fund, not general fund. And I just also think once the plan's built, we have to look at what we charge for an allocation. And yeah. it's different nice. It's different today as more and more growth is being driven towards the towns. People should have to pay for that. I mean, it shouldn't, I, I just, yeah. and I think everything we charge has been really low for a long time until it had to like launch through the roof on homeowners and water rate payers and not on developers for whatever reason. And I don't get that at all. Absolutely. I don't think it's, I think it's been unchanged for quite a few years, uh, you know, the allocations and, and I think the new so plan. So let's use that 100,000 to subsidize the utility rates then. You really don't think we should pay down our massive debt load? Most of the debt load is in the, uh, the enterprise fund. So building up the general fund fund balance, which is already really healthy compared to the rest of the municipal Not according to that state. table. Well, the table's wrong, so. Yeah. I'll look up this <laughs> It's skewed because I haven't read it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I. And that's the unrestricted. I know. Uh, reserves. There are restricted reserves yes. that. That's not we inclusive. We had to dip into once. Mm -hmm. um, we did put money back into it the first year after, so okay. I think there's like 1.9 million in permanent, but it would have to be voted it's on there. again. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. but it's I'll, there. We need it. I'll say, while I'm not inclined to do either thing, personally, I dislike dealing with utility rates less because from an equity standpoint, that helps more residents than tax rate does. Helps We're renters, do it helps study. everybody the study this year to hopefully help adjust to have the fix you know i'm not sure if this new membrane costs more plant will cost more to run than the current one so to try to get some fixed yeah rates and, and you, know, I, you know i don't feel great about changing the minimum bill situation just because a certain amount of money that it takes to turn the plan on and reliable income is important and also whoa couldn't imagine paying any more than i already do so what if we <laughs> did the cost transfer zero percent instead of five percent so that would bring down the general fund surplus and increase the enterprise surplus so that it could pay off bonds when they come certainly up. could do that mm -hmm. that percentage like it's not founded in reality so who it's not so it's, it's 40 right. to 45 percent if you're being realistic but yeah i mean we yeah. certainly it doesn't really move. matter if it's zero or five it's all imaginary just yeah it'll move the so you know, so our that's taxes what, that's where we're going to need money is the enterprise fund not right. the general fund yeah, so effectively our taxes are already subsidizing the enterprise fund right yeah yeah Right. So I could adjust <laughs> yeah. in in um, from five percent to zero. It's like a hundred and some thousand that would go back to enterprise and still be a positive on the general fund. And I could send, you know, if we don't want to have a work session next week, I can just email the updated. <coughs> info. I don't think we need a work session for yeah. just that. <laughs> how, how much of our debt is general fund? You said twenty three percent to seventy seven. About two and a half million. Because the last two bonds is what's left, and they were water and sewer projects, Liberty and Commerce and Kidwell were more, you know, focused on that. The 2012 was like the wharf building and some park stuff, you know. So right now it's 77.23. Let's unlock soon. 2016 unlocks June of 25. And which, what is that? That's the 50-50. I think that's I mean, the rate. That was the um, wasn't Liberty refinance Company. of the, was that the refinance of the that war? That was Kidwell. And Kidwell and a refinance. Yeah. We can probably look it up, I'm sure. Oh, I have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to make guesses, but no, I I'm trying been. to Sorry. remember back Sorry, to. Sorry, my fingers aren't working. I don't remember All right, yesterday. So, yeah, it's part know. of the D10 pays 0.055%. Streets pays four four five, and then fifty percent is water sewer. So it's fifty fifty for that one. The twenty seventeen bond is a hundred percent enterprise. And the one that unlocks, um, what's the? That's the fifty fifty fifty. What's the interest rate on it, please? It is. Uh, where's my bank rec sheet? Hold on. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a couple percent. I know I have it. It's just where it's at. I have so many sheets back here. We'll have to look in to see if we're making more money than we're paying. Making more on our bank account than yeah. we're paying on debt. That's what I, and I'll get you the, I know I have them, I just gotta find them. So I can, Sorry. yeah, I'll, I'll get them to you. 
but it's just, it is a couple percent. So I'll reduce the allocation from five to zero, add the capital 3,000 for the trail brochures and email updated copies, cancel our budget work session for next week, and then that'll be the budget that will be presented for adoption in May and June. Thank you for all your work. This has been the yes, thank you. <clears throat> most painless of my yeah. Yeah. time <laughs> doing that next time. We tried. I said that last time, I don't think you were here. I said, you know, that this is, the, I think, the ninth mm -hmm. budget that I've been involved in, and this is the smoothest and best yeah. one. Yeah, such a good team we it was, have. It was Absolutely. put together well, it was balanced, and but notes were helpful. There wasn't a lot of static about it. It's just, yeah, yeah. it really flowed well. Really well. Job. And the team, yeah. Yeah. we yeah. tried to look, we tried to think your questions before. Yeah. So that helped a lot. Just, just remember this next trickier. year. Just, <laughs> just remember this next year. She'll <laughs> <laughs> so be like, let's roll back the tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well, I will email you the bond interest rate. I have them. I just, I have so many papers in this box. Anything for our second citizens forum? Okay. If not, we'll adjourn this budget work session of the Centerville Town Council. We'll start, as we always do, with the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Council, in your packets, you have minutes from a couple of budget work sessions and a council meeting. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Um, I didn't see anything in the budget work sessions, I believe. Was it the council meeting that you saw the typos that you and I were I talking corrected about? those. Okay, they were corrected yes, in the packet. Never mind. <clears throat> okay. Do we have a motion to... We can do these all together, right? Well, different members were absent at various meetings. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how, if we can All right, we'll that. split them up. Do we have a motion <laughs> to approve the March 14, 2024 budget work session minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have a motion to approve the March 21st budget work session meeting so, minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Do we have a motion to approve the March 21st meeting minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Shoo. My favorite time of the night, Citizens Forum. <laughs> Do we have anyone who wishes to address the council? Okay. We have a closed session statement. The town council met in closed session on Thursday, April 4th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. to discuss, I'm sorry, to discuss personnel in accordance with the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Five members of the town council voted to close the session. The authority to close the session is found in section 3305 of the general provisions article. The town council discussed the following topic, personnel. We discussed board and commission members. The following members and staff were present. Ashley H. Kaiser, president. Eric B. Johnson, vice president. Daniel B. Worth, Jim A. Beecham and Jeffrey D. Keel, members. Carolyn Brinkley, town manager. Gay Adams, town clerk applicants for boards and commissions. The meeting adjourned at 6.56 p.m. Okay. Um, now we have some appearances. The moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> we have our new canine. I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you can't tell us he's bashful. That's not going to work. Oh my gosh. Chief, make sure you're talking. He's so beautiful. He is. So, good evening. I'd like to introduce you to our newest T19 for the Centerville Police Department. This is T9 Catch and Officer Jimmy Henderson. Now, a little bit about T9 Catch. <laughs> 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 he's a four-year-old black lab. He was born December 2nd, 2019 in White Plains, Kentucky. He is registered in the American Kennel Club and the United Kennel Club under the name Cash One Hand. So Cash comes from a long line of titled working dogs. 
Uh, him and Officer Henderson were first introduced. He seems Jan to really love his job. He, he <laughs> adores his job. Uh, Officer Henderson and K-9 Cash were both introduced to each other January 8, 2024. Uh, they quickly began their training in narcotics detection and tracking. After several weeks of training, they became certified to the Maryland Police and Correction Training Commission in the detection of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine. K-9 Cash is also certified in tracking. They became licensed to the Maryland State Police on February 23rd this year. K-9 Cash and Officer Henderson began their first shift as a certified and licensed team on February 26th of this year. Since that time, the team has continued its mandated monthly training. K-9 Cash currently serves as the only law enforcement K-9 permanently assigned to Queen Anne's County at this time. The team has already conducted several narcotic scans in Centerville, along with assisting Maryland State Police, Queen Anne County Sheriff's Office, and the Queen Anne County Drug Task Force. Uh, the K-9 has also been received very well by our members of the community due to his friendly and non-aggressive nature. He has been an excellent community relations tool, especially for our youth. We look forward to watching the K-9 team develop and grow with our community. So everybody, this is K-9 Cash. Yay. 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 <laughs> Chief, I want to know why, why you're not that excited to see us. Look at Anybody want pictures? Everybody got pictures? Oh my gosh. Well, he is beautiful. Indeed. Thank you very much. We're very excited to have a canine back in the That's Center right. of Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All downhill from here, guys. <laughs> okay, Cute. almost exciting as a brand new beautiful dog, the wastewater <laughs> plant update. <laughs> well, hello everyone. I am Janelle Turner, the program manager for the Department of Public Works. And you can introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Pear Stark with Whitman Record and Associates, and we're the engineering consultant to the town. <clears throat> all right, we'll jump right into some updates that I know you all have been waiting for for some time now. Which one of these buttons do I push, Carolyn? <laughs> uh, you may have to point it at the computer over there, maybe. Beautiful cover photo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we have to put it that way, right? Yeah. yeah. She put it. She put it in that uh -huh. one, hoping it would be closer and it would work, but. Uh -oh. No, nope. we're trying to keep up with you guys. <laughs> Where's Jamie to fill time for me when I need her? I'm a little disappointed myself. <laughs> Can you tell us without slides? Well, <laughs> we like to be guided by our slides, but I guess you want to quickly just go through uh, the very first slide, which is where we talk about kind of where we are right sure. now. Yeah, so we, we are in, in the process of, of uh, developing the preliminary design uh, and concept design for the treatment plant. There's really three components to that. Um, one is uh, improving its ability to treat better than it's doing now in terms of effluent quality um, and essentially <clears throat> uh, improving the reduction of nutrients, which in our case is nitrogen and phosphorus, and that's consistent with uh, the state uh, requirements for uh, treatment plants in, in Maryland. Um, and we're using a, a state-of-the-art technology, uh, essentially a very fine membrane filtration technology uh, that creates, develops a, a very reliable uh, and consistent effluent quality. Um, the second part is uh, the expansion part. So right now the plant is um, permitted for a little over ha uh, half a million gallons per day of, of, of incoming wastewater flow 
and the town is looking to expand that capacity to uh, one million gallons, so almost almost double the capacity. Um, so that is built into the plant upgrade. It's just bigger tank, it's more equipment, et cetera. Um, and then the third part, uh, and I know Janil will talk about that a little bit more, is um, disposing of the effluent, of the plant effluent, and especially as the flows go beyond the permitted capacity, uh, the town is looking at, at different disposal options. One may be <clears throat> surface discharge or stream discharge, uh, and another one would be um, uh, spray irrigation, which is currently uh, employed uh, with, with the plant. So that. <laughs> that summarizes that well. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, <coughs> again, off the top of my head, because I really didn't take any notes, but um, we are, we just recently uh, turned in our preliminary engineering report to MDE. We have since received, that was in December of 2023 that we turned that in. We have since received comments and feedback back from MDE about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So uh, Whitman, Rockhart and Associates is currently reviewing those comments and create, uh, you know, putting together feedback so that we can resubmit to MDE for another review, hopefully, maybe a final re <laughs> review, hopefully, if it's crossed. Did we get copies of that report in December? <laughs> so. I don't think so, but you may not really want the, we want to give you the final versus, because you're going to keep getting, but it's up to you again, yeah. but if you want the initial draft, that's perfectly yeah. fine. And, and the comments back would be fine okay. too. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So we'll make sure we get that to you. And then just because you're working on getting the slides up, uh, did anything come back? that was so earth-shatteringly unexpected, or was it run-of-the-mill sort of feedback that you would expect from MDE? Uh, pr pretty much what we expected. Okay. They, they are there. We, we've been working directly with MDE through, through the process, and they've been very <clears throat> forthcoming and very involved and, and very good with you. Um, that's positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even prior to that, we had bi-weekly meetings with MDE. So they, they were involved from the beginning so that it was easier for them when they submitted. I mean, it was, what, two pages of comments? I mean, it wasn't very too much that they right. asked for um, in their comments back to us. So, good. yeah, they did a really good, thorough job. <clears throat> um, let's see. Is a doubling of the plant site going to fit on the existing site? Uh, yes, it, it is constrained. And, and one of the challenges is that we have to maintain or keep the existing plant in operation. Yeah. Um, in, in, in some cases, in some facilities, you, you can sort of overlap construction while you're maintaining, but here we need everything that the plant has now because it's, it's pushing pretty close to its capacity. Um, so, but there, there is real estate to, to put the new facilities in and build them in parallel with. Uh, type of technology is a very, um, uh, space efficient technology uh, so that 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 should be at this, at this stage are you starting to play with site plans or you, yes. is that later yes no we, we definitely have that yeah. that that's part of the engineering document okay, that we submit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so i'm not sure what's going on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can do it. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> you it's here. Okay. Uh, I'll you can, yeah, you drive. drive. <laughs> Hopefully, okay. Well, we don't mean to have our backs to you guys. You're fine. <laughs> you can go to the next slide. Pictures just keep getting more beautiful. <laughs> and the next slide. Uh, one back. Thank you. Um, so I don't know if many of you have seen the. Oh, go ahead. The last slide was that the one that included the environmental stuff as far as. Go back one slide for me. I just please. had a comment. I didn't want to ahead, no miss problem. it. I'll just make it since I interrupted. Forgive me. 
Um, a member of the Corsica River Conservancy had asked some questions offline about, you know, will there be an opportunity to talk to folks involved in this project to understand? And right off the bat, I know my comment was, well, what we have today, you wouldn't replicate by law. We probably couldn't re replicate it. So um, I, I just think, and I'm sure this is going to be part of the presentation, um, some of the things that you let in with are, are really helpful. And because um, we have some groups that I think are poised and ready to say, show us the, the proof here that this is going to be environmentally sensitive or, yeah, sensitive. So just throwing that out there. Next slide. So you make a very good point because we have actually met with them. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, You've already we done have. that. Um, Great. We've, we've met with uh, the Corsica River Conservancy group and we schedule some time to meet with the community of um, Quail Run so that we could just get community information out, um, see if we can get buy-in and support of the plant and our proposed outfall solution. Um, it's important that they're involved, you know, throughout the process and informed so that, you know, we can collectively as a town make a really, you know, a good decision on what to do with the effluent. And I, and I just, I'll end with this. I'm just so glad that we're doing that at the front end Absolutely. Um, rather than as we get knee deep into this and Absolutely. then they're, they're potentially throwing flags on the place. So, uh, but I'll be quiet. Should one of us be participating in those meetings with you? Um, so I know Dan did sit in with us for the commissioner meeting, but Phil, yes, absolutely. We would love, I think it would yeah. be very good to have you all in those meetings. Uh, at, you know, we all come together as a support group for one another, um, to inform the community. Yeah. Let us know when those things are and we'll figure out yeah. what one or two of us makes the most sense. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. It's probably not me. That's I understand great. very little of this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's see, we, uh, the, we did meet with the county, as I stated, and the county has um, adopted a <laughs> portion of what we proposed. Obviously, the outfall is the part that we're still trying to iron out, um, but they did approve the upgrade. And there's kind of like they approve the expansion, but not the outfall, if that makes sense. But they haven't, un they haven't said no. They haven't They've, said no, but it's, yeah. they're just they, waiting. They're just waiting. Yeah. So they want some the more information. Part, yes. 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 And I that, think that yes. the county is having Harpern as, be as being the very first, first entity that has to say yes to this. So right. I, I think they're just being cautious on. Right. Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, we're still gathering information as well on our sure. end to make sure that, you know, we don't want to pollute the Corsica River or you know, cause heartburn for anyone who lives in the community. I mean, when people hear your waste, you're putting wastewater, and, you know, so I yeah. get it. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that we're armed with information so that we can provide that to the community. And I think you all understand the sensitivity for this town when we have a history of dumping right. what we paid for right. dearly, for, as I understand it, um, right. back in the day. So right. thank you for the sensitivity around that. The county's sole wastewater treatment plant does discharge into the bay. It does, yes. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we kind of touched on this. We did, as I said, receive comments back from MDE, and we're working on drafting uh, our response back to them. So that should be in the next, I don't know, maybe two weeks or so, we'll be able mm -hmm. to get comments uh, back to them. And as I stated, we'll just continue to work with, with you all and the different interest groups and the citizens of the town to talk about the effluent disposal and the options and what we've learned uh, as we go along. Next slide, please. Oh, you're driving. I'm driving now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to let you take this slide, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. But, yeah, so we, we have... We're starting to move forward with a, sort of a next phase of the engineering investigation, and one would be geotechnical um, work that we have to do a few soil borings and, and the subsurface investigations because we will have new, new facilities, new structures to be put in place there. Um, 
the stream discharge. So there's there's really two options that we're looking at for discharging the um, well, both the current permitted capacity, but then also the expanded flow. And one is the spray irrigation that we're that we're already doing, um, but that would have to expand, uh, or it's well, or it could be a combination is stream discharge, and we're talking about Corsica River. And I, I don't think I'm lying if I say that it, it's it, the, the Corsica River stream discharge is challenging, uh, <clears throat> both to some extent from an engineering standpoint because we have to run a pipeline from the plant through town or parallel to road, and then find a place where we can actually discharge and. Uh, can you run down that down the stream bed? Well, the, uh, right now the, the plant ha has, uh, I think it's called gravel run, it's sort of a wetlands area. Um, we, we can't discharge there. That, that's you, uh, what I'm asking, can you run the pipe? We, yes, we, yeah. through the stream bed and well, not we, along the highway. Well, we can, we can, yeah, stream bed or, or along the road, or we can, I mean, we, we can run it. I mean, we can horizontally drill and so forth, but the question is really how how far do we have to go out? Sure. And um, and, and and that's really a, a question that we don't have an answer to, you know, right now in this phase, and that we would be looking a little bit closer at. Um, and um, so that that's a, that's a challenge on on the on the on the outfall on the. Coast Riverside, and there has been some strong opposition from the public on that. I mean, that's yes. and, and in the meetings that we've had with, right. with that, we we sensed that not to the plant itself, not to the upgrade, not to the technology necessarily, but the disposal of that. The disposal. Yeah. Sure. And <clears throat> the the other option uh, is is what we're doing now is is spray irrigation. The capacity of the existing fields would have to expand, so we would have to find more fields uh, and more storage area, more storage uh, lagoon area <clears throat> to manage that disposal. Um, That's a 300 acre farm that we have, yes. but I don't think we're using all 300 for various reasons. Not that we can, but. Right, right. Um, but we would, we would have to go, or you would have to go. I mean, you need another 300. Yeah, exactly. Another right. 300 at right. minimum. Okay. So there's two elements to that, that it's acquiring the land. Sure. Uh, and then also, again, get, get the flow to, to, that, to that area. So there's a pipeline. And, so the, um, could the lagoon we have <coughs> support two different fields? Probably not. Because well, I know there's been plans enough. and discussion from time to time of expanding that lagoon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and <clears throat> right, and that it, it would it would have to be expanded in volume because we the challenge is during the rainy season, winter season, we would not be able to <coughs> spray irrigate. So there there's a balance there. Now we still have the the current uh, gravel run stream discharge in in the plant's permit um, with the treatment th that. That, win that window where we can dispose in the stream is about three to four months in, in the winter time when we cannot spray irrigate. With the plant upgrade and the improved effluent quality, we can still use that stream discharge for that winter window. Uh, so that, that, that works out well. Just for the 500 thousand now uh, we could we could probably go to the one MGD because of the effluent quality okay. that we're that we're putting in the the total waste load that we're adding to we're not exceeding the current permit so we're under that cap um, and that's discussions that we've had with MDE on okay that. that would just be for four months instead of the correct was the original correct. I mean correct. the original idea is to do it all year right correct. yes yes yeah, so that's where you're having a hard time with the with the neighbors and, right, and MDE yeah, had already right. said the current stream discharge location you cannot do it all year you'd have right. to go right. uh, out in the river uh, okay. downstream uh, right so and that's that's the challenge that we're that we're facing with. does that is MDE hasn't really said no to that option yet I mean there's still 
No, they haven't because uh, about 10, 12 years ago when, when MDE developed the uh, total maximum daily load uh, document, TMDL document for Nutrien in Corsica River, uh, they were looking to uh, year-round discharge from, from the Centerville plant into Corsica River. So um, th they are on board with that. And then they're supportive, but but they're not. Uh, they're, they're, they would rather see other options. Sure. Let's put it. That. Yeah. It's, it's the how, not the what. I'm sorry. It's the how, not the what. Right. <clears throat> um, and 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 they are sensitive also to public uh, uh, input and feedback, and they deal with that obviously. <laughs> Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so this is a very high-level schedule, guys. <laughs> 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 but, um, uh, I mean, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, we, are, we expect the PER preliminary engineering report to be complete around June of this year. Um, then we'll go into the design phase immediately following that. Um, we expect that to be about a year's worth of um, planning and design, and then we'll go into construction permitting and everything we need for that toward the end of the year. We'll move into the bidding, so that'll be like the bidding phase and permitting and anything else we need to get people in place to, you know, start the actual work. We hope to be concluded with the bidding process and have already selected our contractors, vendors, et cetera, by, the, by 2026, and then go ahead and be starting with construction and then done with construction by 2029. <sighs> All while still working on trying to figure out where we're going to dispose of the effluent. So we'll be managing that process in parallel. And since you have this slide up, it, just a continued theme from the budget uh, workshop session, I know I particularly am going to be very interested in hearing from the June to December time frame, if not sooner, what are those elements of the project that can be obligated in terms of ARPA? So um, it's very Absolutely. eager. Uh, next slide, please. All right, here are some of our funding uh, Carolyn, did you want to take the slide? Let me take it. Either way, it's fine. Okay. So uh, we have Bay Restoration Funds of about 14.9. Uh, congressionally Directed Spending, which is our federal earmark money, about 2.15 million. We have the ARPA listed um, at 2 million. Reason being, there may be some other things that come up, so we kind of took the, the half off. Uh, we have 500 from uh, rural development, which is commerce funding. We have loans on there. Uh, clearly, there this does not add up to 38 million dollars. No, you don't say. So um, we'll, we're still kind of looking at some grant options to see, you know, what's available. But uh, there is definitely a delta, and we will have to figure out how to fund the remaining balance of the plan. So loans. Are a possibility that we may have to decide. Yeah, about halfway there. So, and I think we're <laughs> up against it in terms of more state funding because right. the state feels like offering us the loan for the other half is very generous <laughs> of them. <laughs> so, I mean, I disagree. But one of the things that happened when um, Secretary Day was here, and of course, I know we might be hearing more about that in terms of the Main Street stop, that kind of thing. Um, but I happen to be at the round table that was on Kent Island, and there's an angle here potentially um, from housing that could be leveraged um, by way of the expansion end of the project. And so I got the impression from some of his cabinet level, his cabinet, if you will, folks in the room, that there might be some additional funding opportunities. So I got grabbed a couple of business cards of some folks that I want to follow up with, and I'll copy you all on that. We've discussed quite a bit along the way, but uh, do you guys have any other thoughts, questions, concerns at the moment? 
that we can answer for you? I have many concerns. <laughs> 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 Me too, actually. <laughs> um, I, my chief concern at this point, and you maybe can't answer it now, is that that list of money, like we're clocks are ticking on not just the ARPA, but like we're going to have to spend the CDS money. We're going to have to spend. I mean, the the Bay Restoration money we can kick the can probably pretty far down the road. Yeah, we um, I our um, lobbyist actually contacted them to find out because I was very nervous about that uh, money. Um, they did inform us that that money is ours and it is It'll has just been carrying, earmarked yeah. for us and it's not going anywhere. So yeah, so that'll keep carrying over. It, <clears throat> from a funding standpoint, and we have a very good lobbyist. I think those of us up here probably need to get more involved next year, over like over the summer and fall, in making sure that we are showing up everywhere we need to show up when cabinet officials are in town and I know everyone that could made an effort to be there when there's Eastern shore night at the legislature, when elected officials are speaking at ESAM, I just think we have to go out of our way to be everywhere we can possibly be to advocate for the town. And I mean, raising state government funding is what I do all day at work. And it's a, an exceptionally challenging budget year in a lot of places here included. I think next year is probably going to be worse here. And infrastructure wise, the center of a water plant is not the first thing on anyone's mind. So I just think we have to really, the council, the members of the council, the staff can only do so much. We have to really lean in everywhere we can with getting more advocates. And I think that's something we need to demand of the many, many people that are anxious for us to get the plant and build is that they leverage their contacts too. Because that's a big, I mean, we need like 20 million more dollars and that's a today's money. Who knows in 2028 what the bill is going to look like? So, oh, with the thought that some of that money has a time fuse to it, <clears throat> are there components of the plant, notwithstanding the outfall, are there components that could be built within the next couple of years, not necessarily operationalized, but just built? So, you know, generic enough that whichever different path we wind up taking later, they're still viable assets that can become operational in a final design. Like where you're at. Oh, perfect question. And we've been talking about exactly that. Um, Carol and I have met with a few of our funding sources uh, to get additional information on kind of what we can purchase and make sure we're following the terms and conditions of, you know, what the money is for. We've also met with um, uh, Whitman Rockhart several times to see, you know, what equipment can we purchase now? What materials can we purchase now? And just store until we're ready to roll. So um, we're still having some discussions because we have to kind of like, what are, you know, what are they saying we can purchase? And then we have to make sure that it aligns with kind of what the grant says we can do. You want to be backed into a corner, right? Right, exactly. So um, once we solidify that, we will definitely let you guys know. Appreciate all your work on this. Carolyn oh. speaks so highly of you and oh. just very thankful to all that you're doing to keep this incredibly complex project straight. No problem, thank you. I have one question that I don't know if it's been answered up to this point, but based on the current design, is the water that comes through the affluent drinkable? Got it. That's just. It looks I've been like asked a couple times, and I said I would get that answer. So. It, it, it is very. You very taste close. it first. <laughs> the Aaron Brockovich moment. We, we, we brought this in from Hinkley. You, you, you could not tell the difference holding up a, a bottle of water and, and the effluent, uh, but it, it is not. It, it is very close, but it but it's not. not I was going to volunteer as tribute, but in light of that, I see you anyway. That's the worst that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Could we get people to pay to see that? We have about twenty million dollars. You know what? Raise. We need to raise money for the project. Right. Right. Let's Let's do do it. It. I got five dollars on it. <laughs> when I first started hearing about this, there was an array of technologies we were looking at. 
Have we settled on a single technology yet? Are we still thinking there's options for different technologies to go? I heard you say about the microfilter. Um, I just, it, again, I don't want to paint ourselves into a corner, but I also have no problem if we've made the right choice now and can run with it. So help me out. In the preliminary engineering report, that's what that report really is, is the foundation for, is that we have select, we've evaluated uh, we, we go through a, a process that you have to do with the state of Maryland to access their funding uh, for these projects. So there, there's a whole guideline as to what we what we need to do. And we've looked at a handful of, of technologies that we've screened, and then we've looked at a few more detail, did some cost comparison, non-economic factor comparison. And so we have, yes, we have selected a, a technology, um, proposed technology. Uh, at this point that we could that we could move forward with so it's we, a common one that that other regional plants are using uh, yes like, yes. like um, was it Greensboro or Goldsboro Greensboro and Goldsboro combined have a brand new plant they just opened the last few years it's a sim similar 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 technology, technology. Yeah. Okay. There, there are there are probably two three four different types of, of fundamental technologies and then you have variations depending on the plant size and the treatment levels and things like that um, but but this this is this is a well uh, um, you know well tried you know process so for, for the next generation of council members <laughs> what happens after a million gallons <laughs> <laughs> is it a whole new site then we got a band no, site we've no, got uh, we, 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 we are we, we always we always look look at the, at, at, at that uh, expand ex, expansion sometimes beyond the planned expansion so uh, there is footprint um, availability to to build more of the same tankage in other words more you know more parallel treatment uh, and and that, that, that's something that we're thinking of as much as we can as the design develops. Okay. And, and sometimes even you may put some facilities in uh, that are easily then applied to future expansion. That's sometimes just you know, a, a dollar, dollar decision. Uh, and we appreciate that eye toward that, knowing we, we're very mindful that previous years of council not to rain on anybody's previous history here but um we're trying to be exceptionally mindful of the second this thing's done we are we need to already be thinking about the next one so that's great and i also want to point out the technology selection and we we've had some discussions uh amongst us and with with the state and even the I think it came up in the in some of the public right uh the interest groups is that the technology is also um, suitable to go beyond uh, the treatment levels that we are planning for here. You brought up the question about whether you could drink the water. There, there is a lot of push in different parts of, of the state and in, in other states, certainly when you're talking about out west and so forth, with the future of, of potable uh, water reuse, uh, direct or indirect. And this technology would give us the, the basis to build upon that in the future. Um, so, <clears throat> but that's yeah, and I, and I think our, our plan is that in 20 years, we're not, okay, we gotta do another, we're going to one and a half million or two million and we have to redo this entire plan. It's, we, I'm probably simplifying it, I know, oh, yeah. Pear, but it's <laughs> like yeah. we can add components right. to be able to upgrade instead of an entire... Right. To keep up. To well, keep right. up. Right. As we continue to hear about this, I think better understanding the scalability, you know, of, of the design. And that also leads to the question of maybe it's not wise to jump from 500 to a million in construction right now since we're concerned about cash, maybe we just build facilities with the plan and the permit for a million, but we just build a 750 and then five years later, just thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. The million gallons already doesn't keep up with our comp plan that we just did. I'm just trying to, 
phase the dollars. I'm not saying yeah. stop. No, I know. I'm just trying to phase the dollars. I haven't lost hope that Eric will drink enough non-potable water to raise the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I haven't lost no. hope that we're going to find adequate it's like the <laughs> legitimate, I'm I'm legitimate funding sources for the plant. Um, it, this feels a little Groundhog Day to me because in my three years up here, it's like, we go back and forth, 750 a million, and it just felt pretty settled at a million, and I yeah. just no, want I, us I to no keep with that. march it towards a million. Yep. I'm just trying to make the cash flow get Don't us give there. up hope, Jim. Not, not about to. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be smart about it. No, I agree. It, but I want to see us not do that. Yeah, well, I, think, I think he's kind of talking about, like, a, you know, it's really, it's a cash flow thing, you know, how do you phase it so that you. you increase the capacity and it's not just one day it's 500 and the next day it's, next a, day it's a million. Okay, it's like, well, it should be somewhat incremental so we can right. if we need to kind of accommodate growth in the to get town. To a million, build one now right. and one in three years or something like that. Something like that, right. Right, with still the full plan. We got to make sure what our, any of our funding is tied also. Like what we told the state when we asked for the money. Okay. Anything else? Just when when would the next presentation be roughly, would you say? Expectation management for us. We <laughs> no, right? June of twenty twenty five. Here we go. That's what you're thinking. June we'll give you July. July. How about July? Okay. <laughs> July. <laughs> like the July should be fine. Yeah. Or like the July meeting, because then we'll be done that. We have one meeting in July, yeah. assuming the council votes on that at that time. <laughs> um, on what the you know, we could do what's that? Votes on the meeting? Whether or not we do our summer scheduling like, at some yeah. point soon. So. Um, no, it will not be July 1st. <laughs> no, that would be the third, the third weekend, or third okay. weekend. Okay, so July-ish. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That sounds much. good, y'all. Good. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Not as exciting as the puppy. I just sure want to make that, that clear. <laughs> I liked the puppy better. All right. Almost as exciting as a puppy. Main Street Improvement Grant updates and Project Restore. I'm with these big chairs. Okay. Hello, everyone. I get to continue the conversation, but with tangible money, which is always <laughs> great. So I have um, a couple opportunities to discuss with you and also seek your support on. One of them is uh, the one that you're more familiar with, the Main Street Operating Assistance Grant. That's the $25,000 that I get from the state um, as a designated Main Street. Uh, this grant will open uh, April 14th, and um, when I was looking at this at a recent Main Street meeting, I found out that we can put facade improvement money in here. But mm -hmm. Typically, we were getting that from uh, Community Legacy. It's going to be administered a little differently, but in between, I could be putting money in this as well. Um, so I'm proposing that of the $25,000, we put $15,000 into um, that grant because it's not only benefiting the individual businesses, but the town as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's significant impact money. Uh, I've been, when this will be the third one that I am submitting for, and they all been sort of a split between direct and indirect benefits to the businesses. So this definitely falls into that um, direct benefits. Uh, the rest of it is administrative costs, things like uh, the costs for the Main Street website. Um, I would like to do a large, um, one or two large business promotions where uh, we work with uh, maybe a business sector, maybe the restaurants, and do a promotion. And they have some buy-in, but I'm taking the heavy lifting from them. Um, and uh, we've been doing really well with professional services like the content writer. We've been getting very big stories in the Record Observer because we're writing them um, and repurposing in, in the circular. So I'd like to continue to do that as well. Um, so those are the main areas. 
um, for that grant. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Great. Yes. Awesome. And I feel like we should have a drum roll, please. I know. <laughs> yeah. So I have in my trusty hand my 102 North Commerce Street file that I've had with me since I started. And uh, to prove that, my hire date was November 6, 2012. This was the first thing I did, and it was November 8, 2012, where I went over to the, um, the finance office to find out who owned this property and what could we do and, and all of that. So at that point, it was in probate. So um, along the way, we've had three owners, um, and each time along the way, we've been offering grant opportunities, facade money, lots of things. And in fact, the same grant now that uh, is just dropping into our laps. It's all about timing, isn't it? So this is Project Restore, and this is the remainder of the ARPA money. So the big pool of funds is $8 million. And um, in previous reiterations of this that we have offered to property owners, it was only available to property owners and tenants, and the building had to be vacant for six months. So the overarching goal is to activate vacant properties. And um, the grant funding ranges from $30,000 to $300,000. And <clears throat> everything from renovations and fit out to furniture, fixtures, equipment. So this is really an awesome um, grant opportunity. And um, about a month ago, Carolyn got a visit from the owners. They purchased this property last June. They had plans in hand. Uh, within uh, a few days, we found out about the project restart. Um, Tanya and I went and got um, uh, more familiar with the grant and how it would work. Today we had a meeting with property owners, talked to them about this opportunity and, you know, making sure that everything that is required of the grant, which is basically um, it needs to be activated by uh, November 31st, 2025. And that does fit within their time frame. Um, so, our next steps is to start writing the grant. Um, and this is found money um, no. for people who now have, they have a plan, they have a timeline, they have a budget. So this is like a shovel ready project, finally for that building. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Mm, Very. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you can share with us as far as when they're hoping to be open? Well, when we shared the deadline, they said, oh, definitely. So they, they have uh, like a one year and a month is their, is their timeline, which falls squarely within this. Um, Do you share the intended use of the building? Restaurant. Uh, and six apartments. Six. Which is really when we, as you know, is when we did the walkthrough for um, uh, Secretary Day, you know, they said, oh, apartments too. So even though this only really covers uh, first floor commercial, they loved the fact that there was also gonna be apartments because that's a huge priority for Maryland to, to make sure that we have housing and, and particularly in downtowns. Um, so there is a lot of, uh, we check a lot of boxes on this project and um, the property owners were, were very excited. They have 18 years experience in running restaurants. Um, and, um, you know, they're like the perfect couple. <laughs> he has a focus on construction. She has a focus on restaurant, like back of the house, but also front of the house. Um, so they're experienced. They have working knowledge. Like we were asking them questions, you know, what's your timeline uh, on the first floor? Uh, they're gonna do some work in uh, the basement and then start, and then the roof, and then in between. <laughs> so, yeah, makes sense. Right. Yeah, so yeah. They, they have a real good um, concept of how this all works. And right. Right. Uh, very spoke, very, um, it's 
their opportunity to show their children that um, you can do everything and anything if you set your heart to it. Like, it's just a, one of those feel-good stories, too. Plus, I can retire this file. <laughs> so um, it's uh, really an excellent opportunity. So uh, Tanya is going to follow up with some questions and tangible things. I mean, they have plans so that we can attach those plans. They have quotes. They, you know, all those things that we're going to need to make this um, a solid grant application. Wonderful. And because it's related to that building, it has been brought up to me a couple times, and I know to you also. That absolutely beautiful signage on the side of the building. Is that ours or the county's or whose is that? That's like jail this way. I have no idea who it belongs to. We'd love to get that off as part of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> All the seven real hot spots. And I did ask them just to get <laughs> um, I did ask them just to get a sense because I, I said I, I just want a visual of the outside and they are planning on scraping repointing the brick so it is going to go down to the the brick which i think is really cool it's so, such an anchor corner in town yeah. and be oh, great yeah. to yeah. have it be used because since you mentioned the sign do we have a feel for when uh the detention center is moving <laughs> we've to totally there? derailed <laughs> um i do not that's a great excuse to get rid of the sign if it's no <laughs> right, the jail right. isn't even that way jail anymore. Yeah. i know they, they <laughs> bought the piece of property yeah okay they bought it from they purchased yeah the, so it's moving pre-release yes all right <clears throat> I'm sorry that's very very good news yep. yes thank, thank you. you for all that you do for our town businesses and i think things just feel <clears throat> good uh, restaurants are busy in town and it just i don't know town looks good yep the tour to be proud of when the secretary was here. Our downtown is beautiful. Yes. So, do I have your support? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. Good stuff. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Next up, Resolution 09-2024, Charter Amendment, Section 701, <clears throat> sponsored by Councilmember Beecham. So this reverses the language change that was embodied in Resolution 01-23 that was passed last year. What this will do is um, reinstill some policy discretion of the council and the police department, still leaving the administrative portion going through the town manager, but having that um, double line of authority Double line of responsibility. All right. Any? What's the process on this? This is a charter amendment. Right, so, it's so we have to um, have a public hearing, <clears throat> and um, so actually, Gay and I were talking about this today. Um, public hearing will more than likely. Oh gosh, this is still in March. Will more than likely be the first meeting in May, May 2nd, to give us enough time to advertise. Um, that same meeting, because we'll, we'll have it on the April 18th agenda as a second reading. You can have your um, public hearing and your consideration on the second. Okay. Then um, <clears throat> there's a 40-day referendum period, and then officially um, it goes into effect on the 50th day after um, you have approved it and then advertised four times after it's been approved. Advertised four times, um, just a summary of it. Any discussion on this today or we just want to move through with that timeline or? Let's move through. Move through. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now. Proclamation for Trails Day, you have in your packet. Um, former council member Steve Klein reached out uh, in his role with the ESLC about Trails Day, which is the fourth Saturday in April to celebrate Trails Day, um, a spring celebration of America's trails, and several surrounding towns have passed a proclamation and celebration of that. Our trails are wonderful and something to be proud of. So um, Mike Whitehill helped provide Carolyn and I some language about our trails. So instead of just doing like the proclamation that everyone else is doing, we added some information about our trails as part of 
um, celebrating Trails Day. So as I shared with you guys in the budget session, if you hate trails, tonight is your moment in the sun. <laughs> but if you love our trails as much as I do, I would like to see us pass this proclamation in celebration of our trails and other wonderful trails. The passage of the proclamation to celebrate Trails Day. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Now we have reports of boards and commissions. Maryland Municipal League. Nothing to report. Okay. Council of Government. Nothing to report. Economic Development. Just want to remind everyone about the Centerville Reaching for Economic Development Enterprise launch. That's next Wednesday, April 10th at 5.30 p.m. here in this room. Really good sentiment out in the community, especially among business leaders to get involved. So very excited about that. Awesome, and I love that, and I don't think it's to be ugly at all, but just a reminder to the public, it's not an official town function. Yes. Thank you for that reminder. All right, Park Advisory Board, Park Advisory Board. Can, can I, I'm sorry to yes. interrupt. Is that on our town calendar, and should it be on this calendar Probably so be on that more calendar. than two of us can show up? Yeah, we will make sure that, I thought April it was 10. on the town calendar, but I'll double check. I'll double check, well, I and we'll it add somewhere it. Too, so. Yeah, I think. I was going to bring the calendar up in roundtable, and I will do that then. Oh, sorry. No, not for that, but you just reminded me about something else. Okay. Um, Park Advisory Board met earlier this week. They elected officers as the same crew as last time. Um, they talked about the trail and their park master plan. They had pretty good attendance. They usually do. I mean, they're all just really dedicated volunteers on the parks board. So... Um, as you guys know, we discussed in budget session earlier some of the things that they wanted to help market our trail better and, and do more. And there's been a lot of birding activity and things on the trail, and so just lots of exciting stuff for the Parks Board. Planning Commission. Planning, <clears throat> the Planning Commission had a work session again um, last night, and they have finished deciding what um, zoning map changes need to be implemented <clears throat> and they're working with a county um, GIS expert to, you know, generate a new map. Um, so um, <clears throat> they meet again uh, on the 17th of April, and the um, the North, Co <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the North uh, Commerce um, mixed use development um, <clears throat> is up for final approval. So. At that meeting, so is the annexation on that agenda too, or they didn't? No? It it got changed. We had a meeting with um, Joe Stevens yesterday and our planner, and after some discussion, there's a few more things that need to be worked out. So um, it's been pulled from the April 17th planning okay. commission work session until they they're working some things out. Okay. It's all on the zoning part of it. So okay, just curious. All right. Reports of department heads, town manager. Um, have a couple things. Um, one, I wanted to, if uh, for those who are not aware, um, Jean Salisbury used to work for the town of Centerville, and um, for 26 years she was with the town, August 17th, 1987 to August 17th, 2013, um, and she passed away um, a week and a half ago um, they did have a private ceremony for her but I just wanted to um, make note that you know she was a great lady I was fortunate to work with her for a couple years before she retired so um, the um, town met with obviously Secretary Day last week um, we had a tour with Department of Housing and Community Development that um, they want to take a look at our facade programs around town. So I just wanted to real quick say that over the, we've received six grants for community legacy facade, total of $280,000. Um, and we have um, received, uh, or it has um, gone towards improving 19 properties in our main street. So, um, and then Carol, as she talked about, we met with the owners of 102 North Commerce Street, and um, we're all very excited about this project and helping them, them move forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then last Thursday, 
Uh, myself, Gay Adams, our Chief Hobbs, Lieutenant Larimore, and Lieutenant Harris all attended um, the Rotary Club meeting. This was my first Rotary Club meeting I've ever been to. Um, so they wanted an update from the town. So Chief Hobbs gave an update from the police department. I gave one from the admin part and um, it was good. Very well received, great feedback and um, really good group of people that do a lot of good work. So awesome. Real quick, just to build on the Secretary Day visit. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I was in the round table in the afternoon that our Commissioner Chris Corcorino helped uh, sort of facilitate. And he brought up the town of Centerville probably four times in a positive way as a frame of reference. And of course, he's our Secretary for Housing, but he was the mayor of Salisbury. And so I just think it's always nice when another municipal leader will laud the town of Centerville. So um, I think that's important. And then, um, since I know he's not here to talk about it, in the Chief's report, under special assignments, first bullet, uh, bullet, excuse me, Symphony Village Fraud Seminar, just wanted to note for the record how many folks have said that that was so helpful and wonderful. So I just wanted to give that feedback. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay. Hey, hey. um, just, I'm looking into doing a couple fun things uh, for our volunteers. I really wanted to do a uh, volunteer spotlight in our e-blast. Oh, awesome. Every, the other Friday when I do that. I, and this came up in the uh, parks meeting when I overheard and was listening to conversations about their past lives. And the secretary is a massive sailor. I did not know she is yeah. meddled and has all these accolades. And I thought, wouldn't that be great for the town to know? And how many other volunteers are quietly sitting there? Um, and the, it also hit me at the Rotary, the guy who drills wells, and he's in Ghana drilling wells, and he's, and he's quiet, tells no one. Um, you know, like, <laughs> so maybe I should just tell their story. So I love we, that. we have a lot of volunteers, and I would like to showcase them yeah. and what they're about, because mm. they're giving their time for free, and they need to be kind of applauded for that. And then for next summer, I really want to create a robust, to start next summer, uh, eight-week intern program for the town. Um, to get us get someone in either high school age depending on how we work it or college age partnering with our um, high school and then with Chesapeake College and getting some really great local talent but showcasing what we have to offer as a town and as we grow we're gonna have more to offer and I just kind of want to I did I I'm a passionate person about interns I ran the last two I've been a part of and I just love it so much because when they see what they have, then they're a great advocate for the town and then they talk about it and it just grows and grows and grows. So those are the two fun projects that I've taken on that I'm going to start digging into. Awesome. And there are <coughs> tons of grants available for intern programs too. Yes. Yeah, we had, Carolyn and I talked about that too. Don't believe in unpaid interns. So no. put that out there. No, and that's what we're, which is why we're not doing it until next yeah. summer because we, Kind of just started that. talking about this and say, well, we're we're kind of done the budget part of so next year. Yeah, and they have um, a really good robust one too. I mean, yeah. give us time. Give yeah, us provide time some time value for them and for us. Value. You know, you don't want them just coming. <laughs> <laughs> and are you dealing with Connie Dean on that for the interns from the high school? From the high school, that far yet. I I spoke with someone else, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting. Oh, and the only reason I say that is. Having good interns is, of course, very important, but the fact that the program is being run by somebody that's really doing a good job, that yeah. helps. So, yeah, Gay's got history in that, cool. and she's taken it and has been uh, happy to run with it. So. <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. clears throat> All right. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Council Roundtable. Council Member Keel. No. Okay. Council Member Beecham. Uh, one question for town manager. Way back when, CETA paid to have some short videos done um, for economic development promotion. And with another council member putting together um, economic development for now, I wonder where those are. Do we own them? Were they I do. Can we restart that program. Those are the coolest little. little they things. were the coolest little videos. Um, you don't have to answer right now, but I just raised. The I question. do have. I can't say that I have all the videos, but I do have the majority of the videos. Um, 
and I don't <coughs> see any reason why they couldn't be restarted. I just don't even know if the company who did it before is still, you know, we'd have to just research that. But I, I think it's a great idea. They were, they were great well, videos. We were going to introduce them like one at a time over a period of time and try to generate some, some interest in traffic with those. So let Council Member Johnson know about those and see those mm -hmm. if he hasn't already, just so you can they see how they can contribute to the new effort. Can they be converted to TikTok videos? Or they, just <laughs> they can. 30 they seconds can. or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. As, long <laughs> as, gonna, as long as you're going to dance yeah. in the first frame. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we've got right, the council some, members up some there. viral yeah. sounds. <laughs> All right, Council Member Wirth. Uh, Give us your TikTok handle before you begin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we missed the Citizens Forum, I think. Did we? No. no did we? we? I'm sorry, Jamie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I missed I just came here just for I, that. You know, I assumed you came because I said, where's Jamie when I need her? And now, you, now you're here. <laughs> but I, I did miss the Citizens Forum. I apologize. Are there any citizens that wish to address the council? Like, okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh, did one of the side. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I seem to remember that GTI was going to give us an update um, about this time of the year. It, 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 you know, not their, their, you know, they're supposed to be done in June, but they were going to give us um, a progress report or something. Based so, on the email I shared with um, our council president just before we started, um, the tour that um, it looks like she and I are going to take uh, third week of April. Based on the email I got back, I said, while I'm there, if you guys could touch on anything that's been done, that kind of thing, highlight that. It sounded like there's a couple things they're finishing up on, and so my suspicion is they'll be ready, but we can ask that question when we're, when we're on yeah, that. Yeah, and they, they do have updates, I know, only because they did talk to the Centerville spy. Oh, okay. Um, he mentioned that to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we should ask them to come in for an update. Yeah, yeah, yeah because... I think the ball's a little bit on our court yeah. to ask them for an appearance. Right. Yeah, rather than you guys reporting, you know, what they told you. Can we do it in May only because I think our next meeting is going to be pretty busy. Yeah. First, second meeting. First meeting in May, if we could. Right, yeah, I guess do that you, sounds good. Do you want me to reach out or? Yeah, can you reach out to their, <clears throat> to Joe, Joe's there, attorney, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See if we can get an update. I don't, to me, they don't have to do a whole dog and pony show with like a no. million people flying in, but some sort of update. Anything else? No, that should be enough. Okay, yeah. Council Member Johnson. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, one thing I ne neglected to mention under economic development, so one of the things I'm going to be asking the folks that show up for the <coughs> relaunch is if they would kindly, Pat Fox and I worked on a scorecard for the current economic development plan um, that Councilman Beecham's wife worked on and, and some other great folks <coughs> in the community. Um, now that the scorecard's in place, how cool would it be if we got a bunch of volunteers who, you know, are professional and may have a little background in that to help do an assessment of that plan and save the town money on having a consultant come in and do that. Um, so um, just wanted to note that. And then really cool, next Friday, April 12th, I think I've mentioned this previously, uh, we're helping as a town by way of the access that I have to the Vincent building to... Um, use the Vincent building for the showing of a wonderful film called Spellers on Autism. Uh, it's been showing all around the nation to packed and overflowing rooms, as I'm being told. Um, it's a really, really powerful video. Um, I've got some folks in my family on the spectrum, and I, I just think it's going to be a really awesome opportunity. So if you have any interest in that and or don't understand autism, it's a great video, I think, to, to take part in. That's all. Awesome. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's at uh, 6 p.m. at the Vincent building. Cool. All right, I have a few things. Um, first Fridays will be starting again in May. They are the first Friday of the month. So I don't know what the dates are, but it's easy to figure out. <laughs> um, but we have a lot of vendors signed up. I think they're going to be a really good time. Um, Council Vice President Johnson and I and our spouses invest just a lot of energy and time into this. And so hopefully the community comes out. Um, I had mentioned to Carolyn yesterday an issue with parking by the Y. So I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but did you guys go see it today, you and Gary, Carolyn? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So Gary and I did go out and look at it. Um, Vincent right now does not belong to the town. Oh. However, I contacted the county and just, it will eventually be turned over to the town. And they, I, we got there okay 
to go ahead and paint it. So Gary will be painting that curb yellow. So when you turn off of Little Kidwell onto Vincent, people are parking there, even though it's not parking. Mm -hmm. So they're just parked in the lane of traffic. It no longer is a two-way road at that moment. <laughs> okay. And so um, I asked Carol about seeing if we could paint that curb yellow because I think it just it creates a situation where if someone was coming the other way and with all the construction, it's pretty dangerous right there. I actually already had a near miss myself, so I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. It was, I was not at fault, just to be very <laughs> Sure, <laughs> yes. He looks um, at Jamie. So I did just want to bring you. that up, and, and I know we had some discussion about some other hot spots in town and with parking and creating traffic safety challenges. And so just encourage you all and residents to let us know those things. We can't be everywhere and we can't see everything, but the staff is incredibly responsive when there are concerns. Um, I wrote code enforcement down here and I don't remember why. Uh, calendar, I think we need to expand what we put in this calendar that's like public and in our agenda. And when I looked at what the county does, there's a lot of community events that you might run into multiple of us at, like the Firehouse breakfast every month. Jeff and I are there. So like, if anyone else comes, there's three of us there. Um, Jeff and I see each other at the Y often. I don't, I don't know. Jeff and I run into each other a lot is what I'm saying. But there are. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> there are other events, I think, that we probably just need to acknowledge that there might be more like community events. That there might be more of us there. We have a pretty community-minded council. And so I want us to maybe beef that up a little bit. And then the other thing would be I'm a character counts volunteer in the county and I would encourage you all as they're getting ready for next year to consider volunteering for character counts. It's awesome. <laughs> you go to a class a couple times a month, do some volunteering. And also on that end, I would like the town to look at becoming a business of character. So there's the pillars of character and the county has a thing for <laughs> businesses of character that commit to living the values and how they interact with the public and their employees and the government can be one, I believe. And so if we could look into that, I think we are a business of character. I think so, too. so we should, you know, sign on to that. And that is all I had. If I could remember why I wrote down code enforcement, I'd let you guys know. But Yes. I suspect just because you want to bring it up at every meeting. I do. I do, I do love code enforcement. You know, we have a beautiful town. We talked about that. That's right. You don't I do. keep a beautiful town if you don't enforce your code. I did bring my little spreadsheet if you want to. Oh, I think we're not a public meeting. I mean, we can just list the addresses. No, no, no. I wasn't saying that. I was just giving. I was just giving like how many. We yeah, have. there's been. There, I was in town hall today, and there has been progress in some things, and also proactive code enforcement, which can be irritating for people, but it's ultimately a good thing. And we want to live in a town that looks as beautiful as it should. Um, I did have a question that maybe we know the answer to um, before we wrap. Uh, Taco Bell's looking really good. Do we know when they're I do they're not know. I need to, somebody else asked me the same question and I need to follow <laughs> up. I don't have the answer We're probably going to get that question more and more as the yeah. side gets I get it every day from the people who live in my house. <laughs> live in your house, yes. <laughs> Mine too. Really? I, I, I got Zeb that same. would not same... a question like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, my family will be first in line there. When I'm... You. Your time was before. Well, I forgot. <laughs> I was trying to find it. No, what's up? Uh, I want to offer condolences to Officer Mark, former yes. Officer Mark Whaley, oh. who passed away last the 26th of March. So, okay. and he served as for a CPD for 27 years. Right. Wow. Right. 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 Thank you, because I I think Chief got called away because I saw him yes, on his did. phone. Yeah. Um, I didn't write that on my list because I think he was going to bring it up, um, but thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, thank you. All right. Did, any, did anyone else forget Stay during here. their time? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we have to sign something. Um, yes, oh, yes. Great. We love trails. We do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> question, does the beautification, does, do we do May Day? Do we do May Day? It would be so wonderful to do May Day, and I bet the businesses would love it. Yeah. Having worked in Annapolis, you know, May Day is like the I, best. I didn't know if we did. Like, did we do that? Carol, let's do May Day. Day. Ask its beautiful baskets on Third Street. Oh. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank <laughs> you.